Welcome back everyone, it's Charlie. Todd Phillips posted a brand new scene from Joker 2, so we'll break it all down. There's a whole bunch of Easter eggs, obviously it's a big deal because they're introducing another version of Harley Quinn that's played by Lady Gaga, not Margot Robbie. And it sounds like Margot Robbie is going to survive the DC reboot and James Gunn's new plan for DC movies. Also explain how this movie fits into that new plan because these are all the new DC movies that are coming, but they will have Elseworlds movies, like movies that are specifically classified as Elseworlds. But you may have seen in your feeds, because it is Valentine's Day in real life as I'm posting this video, Todd Phillips also celebrated Valentine's Day by posting the first look at Harley Quinn meeting Joker, and he's actually in his classic clown makeup. His caption just read, Happy Valentine's Day, and in the scene, you can see Harley Quinn is just captivated with Joker, like she can't believe what's going on, she's so excited, she's just so taken with it all. She seems hypnotized by him, which is kind of their dynamic in the comics and in a lot of the movies. Obviously in the DCEU, since that Birds of Prey movie, they move slightly past it, like Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn isn't enraptured with the Joker as she once was. And their relationship in the comics goes back and forth, like it's meant to be the worst, most toxic relationship you could possibly imagine. They even covered that arc on Batman the Animated Series with her leaving the Joker for a little while and just going to have fun with Poison Ivy and briefly trying to turn good. In the picture, it looks like she's just kissed him, like she's kissed him because he's kind of flabbergasted by it, like, hey, this is pretty cool. And she's got his clown makeup smudged on her lips, which is usually the opposite way these things go. Usually it's the girl who smudges her makeup on the dude, but because we're talking about the Joker here who wears clown makeup, he wears way more makeup than Harley Quinn, even though she eventually does wear a version of that makeup too. It just seems like at this stage in their relationship, she hasn't got to that point yet. But you do notice they are both in plain clothes, which means she may have already helped him escape Arkham Asylum, allowing them to actually change clothes, and for him to actually be able to put the makeup back on. Unless this is also part of one of Arthur's hallucinations, since he is meant to be an unreliable narrator. Good example of that is at the end of the first movie, when they revealed his whole relationship arc with his neighbor was something that happened in his head, he just imagined the whole thing. She just walked in one night and found him sitting in her living room like, please don't kill me or my child, strange person. And a lot of the movie was supposed to take place in Arkham Asylum because the whole idea is that they're introducing Harley Quinn as Dr. Harleen Quinzel and she slowly becomes the Harley Quinn character you know from the comics. She started out as a doctor in Arkham Asylum and then slowly fell in love with him and was just sort of taken with his whole psychology. Todd Phillips also posted the first scene of the movie or the first scene that they filmed. It might not chronologically be the first scene in the actual movie. This is the first scene with Joaquin Phoenix's Joker character getting a shave. Notice his trademark emaciated look, like he gained a lot of weight after they filmed the first movie because he lost so much weight, like a crazy amount of weight. It was meant to play into the sort of unhealthy vibe of the character, like he was just living a very unhealthy lifestyle because of everything that had been happening to him and everything he'd been going through. Clearly things have not gotten better with him being inside Arkham Asylum. He looks none the worse for wear, he's still inside Arkham Asylum. If you couldn't tell, while he's being shaved here, this is a prison guard doing the actual shaving, holding his head down, just in case he tries to escape while they're actually holding a sharp razor to his neck. The way that James Gunn and the other Warner Brothers people talked about the movie, they aren't planning on touching what Todd Phillips is doing with the Joker movie at all. It's still going to be in its own alternate universe. I think that's just because the first movie did so well. Had it not been so successful, they probably would have soft rebooted that too. They're getting the same treatment that Matt Reeves is getting with his Batman franchise, Robert Pattinson's Batman, all those spinoffs. Those are also being currently treated like it's its own alternate continuity. The title is pronounced Joker Foily Adieu, and it's French for Joker Shared Madness, as in Joker Shared Psychotic Episode. It's a term in psychology used to describe when multiple people share the same delusion, the same psychotic episode. This also confirms now that the title, Shared Delusion, so to speak, refers to the shared delusion that Joker will share with Dr. Harleen Quinzel during his stay at Arkham Asylum. There are a lot of reports that say that most of the movie will take place in and around Arkham Asylum, so it'll deal with the development of their relationship, like how he meets her for the first time, how she eventually falls in love with him, and eventually he winds up twisting her to the dark side, so to speak. They've kind of addressed that in previous Batman projects, like they did a little bit during the previous Suicide Squad movies with the Margot Robbie version of Harley Quinn. We saw a little bit of her origin story as Harley Quinn. It sounds like a lot of this movie is just going to be a much bigger version of that. Also because it's still going to be relatively low budget, it makes sense that they would keep a lot of it in and around Arkham Asylum. It'll be really interesting to see what she looks like compared to the Margot Robbie version of Harley Quinn. I had to cut out a little bit of the music from the teaser trailer just for copyright reasons, but this is what the actual audio sounds like on it.
It's playing that classic song, Cheek to Cheek, which is just meant to reference the context of their relationship, like this is happening in Arkham Asylum, like it's a reference to the fantasy that is taking place in his head. You're never quite sure if what's happening is really happening or if it's just happening inside his head. And now, obviously, because it's a shared delusion, is it happening inside her head as well? The fun fact about the Joker serum too is that it's actually derived from the Scarecrow fear toxin, but we haven't had the Scarecrow inside the Joaquin Phoenix Joker universe yet. And even though it is possible that he could use some version of the Joker serum during this Joker sequel, I don't think they're going to play it that way. I think they'll keep it in the realm of metaphor when he talks about sharing his madness with everyone. Like through his actions, through the media, people will watch it, like the people who are writing, and it'll just get crazier and crazier and crazier, and he'll start to win them over through his actions. And they will then begin to share in his madness. It's not like he's going to go around dumping a bunch of fear toxin or Joker toxin into the water supply. That's the really cool, the really insidious thing about the first Joker movie is that he doesn't need any kind of Joker toxin like that. It's all about the role of the media and all this. Like in the case of the first movie, it was his broadcast at the end that helped push his exploits to legendary status. But at the time, he was already building on an existing system of riots that all the people in Gotham had been upset about, the current administration, the growing problems in the city, the whole inequality between the common people who were rioting and the ultra-rich people represented by Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's family. He was in the middle of running for mayor and there were these escalating series of riots throughout the movie as things got crazier and crazier and crazier public outcries during his appearances. Eventually, before he went full Joker at the end of the movie, he called the crowd a bunch of clowns. The whole thing with him secretly being Thomas Wayne's son, I think was actually a bit of a misdirect, but the way the movie plays it, they want to be kind of ambiguous about it because you're meant to be viewing everything in the film from Arthur's perspective. So as he descends into madness, you're meant to see things get crazier and weirder and weirder. In reality, I think that his mother had suffered from mental delusions like he does in the movie, like she had had mental episodes when she was younger, and she just fell in love with Thomas Wayne when her family was working at his mansion and started to get creepy at his house, and then they just imply that his family kind of pushed her family out the door. Like, okay, you go off on your own, no more working for us. And she just descended into a form of madness and just came up with this delusion that she had been in a relationship with Thomas Wayne when that really wasn't the case. So the idea is that he had played a party clown and Thomas Wayne had called the people like him, like the lower class people, a bunch of clowns acting crazy. He started to feel like his life was a joke. Eventually, he just kind of owns all that by wearing the name as his own mantle, calling himself the Joker. Matt Reeves actually had his version of the Barry Keoghan Joker in the Batman movie kind of say something similar, like it's not so bad being a clown. The big difference during the Batman movie, though, is the ages of the Batman and the Joker, and the Joker is in prison in Arkham Asylum because Batman put him there. They released a deleted scene that was meant to be on the one-year anniversary of him putting him in prison, so the Barry Keoghan Joker was joking about that with him, like, isn't it our anniversary? Present. So if it wasn't clear, now obviously Matt Reeves has confirmed that the Joker in his universe is not going to be the Joaquin Phoenix version of the Joker. And even though they are doing all this crazy multiverse stuff with the Flash movie, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker movie will still be set in an alternate universe. It's still going to be rated R, it's still going to be part of DC's Black Label, which is what they're using for their darker, more hardcore films, especially ones that are set in alternate universes that aren't necessarily connected to all the big DCEU stuff. The original movie took place during 1981. Joaquin Phoenix is in his 50s in present day in real world, but he was playing a 30, 40 something Joker. So any references to Batman or any of the other pre-existing DC characters in the Joker sequel is just meant to be a coincidence or in the case of this version of Batman, just a totally new different version of Batman. So Bruce Wayne would still be a child living with Alfred. He'd be a little bit older, but still be a child. And there wouldn't be a bunch of Batman stuff happening yet. Like I said, this is the list of every single DC movie and TV series that's coming up and where it fits into the canon. In the way that James Gunn said that they're treating the Joker movie and the Batman movie with Robert Pattinson is that they're meant to be complete Elseworlds projects outside of his DCU. They're calling it the DCU now. That means when they introduce the new version of Batman in the DCU, the older one who has Damian Wayne, if they do the Joker at some point in the DCU movies, it'll be a completely different Joker again, not the Barry Keoghan one and not the Joaquin Phoenix one. Let me know in the comments, who do you want them to cast is that version of the Joker? Remember, because it's an older Batman, it would also probably be a slightly older version of Joker as well. Willem Dafoe as the Joker would actually be pretty badass. 
There were a whole bunch of Super Bowl trailers, a couple different flash trailers with different footage. Click here for my trailer videos for those and click here for my new Guardians of the Galaxy 3 Super Bowl trailer video and Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.